so good, good evening everyone uh, today the topic that we are going to discuss is uh, 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 teenage girl with uh, bothering skin lesion uh, i would like to discuss this topic uh, under the subtopics of uh, introduction case scenario approach differentials investigation management and uh, finally sometime which time if the time permits introduction in the focus of family medicine the skin problems are very common and challenging sometimes that it warrants well sounded knowledge of such conditions and analytical skill combined with experience of pattern recognition the way of presentation and perception of a, of some conditions varies from person to person and it may alter even the management protocol so paying uh, attention to the patient's idea of concern and expectation is very much emphasized again here and the today the story of a teenage girl with bothering skin condition will elaborate these aspects in primary care in detail the case scenario uh, this is a 16 year old girl at once level student accompanied by her mother to the clinic and saying that she is suffering from recurrent eruptions of pimples and bumps on over the cheeks forehead for last 3 years she described these facial breakouts that began gradually varied in severity worsen during the winters and never completely cleared she was very much upset about uh, this uh, condition and especially after seeing some recent facebook pictures posted by her friend Uh, which were clicked in the recent party she volunteered to say that uh, this breakout has led her to a feeling of low self esteem and she tried over the counter creams and gels without any improvement she also followed some uh, advice by her mother to avoid uh, eliminate chocolates and fried foods uh, again that is without any improvement as a norm in dermatologic condition we usually after the uh, initial presentation even before the, we are talking to the patient we can see the lesion of the uh, condition so, uh, so this is the lesion that we can and this is uh, this can be described as uh, uh, there are some uh, few closed and open comedones there are some pustules and papules uh, with on the erythematous background with this lesion our diagnostic approach is going to be uh, um, with a focused history and examination keeping some differentials in the mind so uh, to go for this uh, differentials uh, we should know Uh, we should to to go for this focus history we must uh, know the uh, differentials at this points so do you have any ideas of this condition that presented friends colleagues do you have any any suggestions this is some pustules and papules with open and closed comedones so here we we can consider the differentials of acne vulgaris so most probable one and uh, that drug eruption sometime can present at the similar way some drugs uh, uh, some acne are associated with some endocrine syndromes also to be considered here after application of cosmetics this can happen so that is another possibility other variants of acne can be presented this way rosacea is more similar to this very much resembling and we will see the pictures one by one of this conditions so this is uh, first lesion this is basically that we saw in the patient similar very much similar to the patient so this is a condition um, can be uh, described as uh, closed and open comedones with uh, with the polymorphous uh, status the various status of the um, 
at the same time. And the presence of comedons basically favors the uh, diagnosis of acne vulgaris. And usually it is the primary form without any secondary uh, precipitating factors. So the diagnosis of uh, acne vulgaris is mainly by the exclusion. This, this is again making the lesion, but here uh, these are very uh, monomorphous lesions. So this is basically happens, these forms of lesions are in drug induced eruptions, drug induced acneform eruptions. So these eruptions can be found in certain, after usage of certain drugs and common drugs that can cause this sort of eruptions are glucocorticoids, phenytoin, lithium, isony acid, and so on. So we must uh, take a bit good history of uh, drugs, uh, the usage of drugs also to find out the cause. Then acne associated endocrine syndromes are there. Those are some uh, non-classical congenital adrenal hypoplasia, acne, hirsutism, and androgenic uh, alopecia can present with PCOS patients. So these are some endocrine syndromes associated with acne. In this case, uh, the conditions should raise the suspicion of hyperandrogenism, especially if the lesion is very resistant and it happens in it can happen in childhood or adulthood. Moreover, the acne presents with the other signs of hormonal imbalance, such as hirsutism, irregular menstruation, altered libido, insulin resistance, and these should raise the suspicion of underlying acne associated syndrome. So, this is the lesion which, which is uh, very much resembles the acne. This is another condition here. What we can see is a similar lesion on the face. This can happen after application of uh, foundation moisturizers and heavy makeup creams that, can, that is called acne cosmetica. So, we can ask for these things in the history. Again, to recap the differentials to continue with these possibilities. This is a very severe form of acne. Uh, it's a variant that is acne conglobata. So it can be an initial stage of this acne conglobata, what we have seen is, but here the duration is three years. Uh, these are the features uh, that with the foul smelling, parallel discharge, and there are some scars. Uh, this involves very extensively in the face, part of sand back. This is another condition, which is another variant of uh, acne. It's called acne fulminance. This has some systemic features with fever and leukocytosis, myalgia, arthralgia, and uh, it warrants some investigation to find out whether there is a possibility of acne fulminance. Uh, so one indication for in investigation, and it's like a red flags. This what uh, this endocrine associated acne, fal acne fulminance, and those things are uh, some. In, uh, points that we have to think about the investigation. This is another variant, which is called acne excoriae. This is, there is some psychiatric history of picking the uh, lesions uh, repeatedly, yeah, and it's commonly seen in young females. Other one here is a very similar distribution, but here the nasal involvement, and there is some flibaritis Component is there on the background of some tarangitis here. So this is rosacea. Rosacea can resemble acne by various uh, having papules and pustules in the face, but it lacks comedones. Instead of that, it has some tarangitis, yes. And the nasal and uh, ocular manifestations are there in uh, rosacea. Another form of rosacea palminans is for, uh, there that is called rosacea pyoderma faciale, which has both the features of acne as well as um, this rosacea. Here, these are the differentiating features between those two. I'm not going to read so because just uh, uh, have an idea of this uh, uh, overlap 
condition that is called pyodoma fasciali. This one is uh, again uh, mimics uh, pustules and uh, uh, papules are there, but in the middle you can see some hair follicles. So this condition is folliculitis. Folliculitis can be confused with acne and looking for a hair centrally located in the inflammatory papules of follicles will help to distinguish from acne and the presence of comedones and lack of pruritus is more favor of acne. Here there will be some pruritus and uh, uh, here and lack of uh, pruritus will be there in the acne. Acne on the back usually accompanies uh, acne on the face as well. So if we see some folliculitis in the shoulder area, there we can we have to look after look for these lesions. The face, if it is not there, it is more like folliculitis. And it is another condition that warrants some investigation, such as bacterial culture we can obtain from the lesion, which may show some staphylococcal or some other pseudomonal growth. Here, there are some similar lesions in the perioral area that is called perioral dermatitis. Here again, the distribution is little bit different and will suggest uh, towards the diagnosis of perioral dermatitis, perioral dermatitis, so also called perioral dermatitis. Here lesions are similar and uh, only additional things, there will be some scales and uh, scales in this lesion, which is called seboric dermatitis, has uh, some sort of uh, overlap with the acne and it may be a causative factor even because it's also happened in the oily skin. So to recap the case scenario, uh, just I repeated the slide with this picture that we have seen and uh, the initial statement given by the patient, we can go for a um, focused history that is to eliminate um, the differentials and to define the hypothesis and to reveal the components of idea, concern, expectation, and to find out the causative factors and risk factors and look for the impact of the illness in the patient's life and to see the complications. So the points to be highlighted in the history, are these are the points that we, we have to highlight in the history, you may see that age of onset, medical history and the systemic involvement, medications, uh, medications history and the skin regimes, anything used, and menstrual history to exclude the PCOS and the recent weight gain and those things, shavings, hirsutism to exclude the hyperandrogenism hyperandrogenis and uh, the family history is most towards the uh, acne vulgaris and current prior treatment and response. Uh, psychological aspect of acne is very much important because it can change the plan of management. And diet and lifestyle, ongoing stress are some sort of a possi uh, possibility factors. So again, importantly, patient's idea and concern expectation to be explored in the focus history. So her focus history reveals she has a, a regular menstrual period, but uh, the last month it was delayed by five days and she uh, uh, she was she's a known patient with bronchial asthma and she's uh, having some sort of on and off ex uh, exacerbations. The last one was two months back. Uh, she was given some prednisolone for five days. That's a, that's a history of intake of steroid and uh, his family history in uh, of ischemic heart disease to his uh, to her father and her menstrual cycles were normal as I said uh, there was a delay by five days and she doesn't have any excessive uh, growth of hair, facial hair which uh, which could warrant regular shaving because sometime on exam uh, on the uh, his examination we may not able to see the features of hirsutism, but if the patients are uh, persistently shaving and keep it free of hair. So 
it should be revealed from the history. So it is comes under the history as well. She was not sure about the other um, over the that medication she already used uh, without any success. So we don't have the documents of the past medical medication history. There's a history of recent weight gain subjectively according to her mother. And her dietary habit was very poor and lacking green leafy vegetables and she preferentially consumes fast foods. And she lives in a government apartment in Maradana and her mother with her mother and she is a single child. Sadly, her father died at his age of 45 years due to the heart attack and when she was about 15 years old. Currently, the source of income to her family is her mother's salary uh, and the deficit supported by her mother maternal aunt. There is ongoing stress in her life due to this condition and uh, with high expectation of her mother as a teacher on her studies and thoughts about the future due to financial constraints. So these are, these are the detailed uh, focus history um, in uh, information we gathered. So uh, in addition to that, we have to concentrate on idea, concern, concerns, and perception. The idea is that it can be due to some poor items. According to her mother's advice, she limited some foods. But uh, really speaking, uh, there is very much less associations, but uh, uh, again, the high glycemic index foods can precipitate. Her concern is very much about the appearance due to that vision and worrying about uh, that would affect her future life. And her expectation is to get rid of the lesion somehow as early as possible. The relevant exam, general exam, so already we have seen the uh, focus examination, we have seen the lesion. And, and the relevant examination, we can check for the BMI to see uh, or say uh, marker of uh, PCOS or obes obesity, so insulin resistance as well. Uh, and is there any features of depression that can be a complication as a result of the lesion? And we can see for the features of hyperandrogenism such as hirsutism, genital enlargement, dipping all four face. If there is a suggestive features of uh, hyperandrogenism only, we have to explore those things. Otherwise, not for each and every patient. And if there is any features of pushing on face, stry or uh, excessive application of cosmetics, we can see when we see the patient as a part of the examination. The relevant general examination reveals she is well dressed with appropriate gesture, no features of depression. She found to be always with BMI of 26. She is febrile and normal distribution of hair and the anterior hairline is uh, normal and there is no um, hoarseness of voice. Uh, so, in summary, uh, this patient. Uh, a, she is a 16 year old student with a past medical history of bronchial asthma presented with recurrent facial eruptions consisting of pimples and bumps on the cheeks and forehead. And she had, um, it is persisted for three years, and these uh, breakouts are worse in severity and exacerbated during the menstrual periods and have negatively impacted her self esteem. She has an idea that is due to some food items and the concern is very much about her appearance and worrying that it would affect the future and her expectation is to get rid of the lesion as early as possible. Examination reveals no abnormalities other than the marginal increase in BMI. Focused examination reveals there are some 15 open comedons and closed comedons of uh, roughly about uh, 8 to 10 papules and 5 to 10 pustules in each half of the face, involving forehead, cheeks, and chin, and mildly on the background of erythematum. So, here, investigations wise, <coughs> uh, we don't want much, but there are three conditions um, that would warrant investigations. 
when there is uh, with suspicion of polycystic ovarian syndrome or congenital adrenal hyperplasia and adrenal or ovarian tumors. This will be presented with the clinical features of irregular menstruation, hirsutism, sign of realization, and development of mild uh, mid-childhood acne and abdominal of severe atypical recalcitrant acne and other signs that may suggest androgen excess in prepubertal children. So early, that means the early onset body odor, early development of axillary and pubic hair, accelerated growth and those so on. So this, these conditions warrants investigation and uh, if we suspect this condition, we have to do total and uh, main the PCOS, total and free testosterone level, sex hormone binding globulin, LHS, FHS, FSH and DHA sulfate and and hydroxyprogesterone urine free cortisol. Depends on the finding, we may uh, go for ultrasound scan, uh, abdomen or CT scan of ovaries and that. Investigations in the patients we suspect, the, as I said earlier, uh, fulminance is another form of uh, acne, which can present some systemic features where we can observe some derangement of your function, leukocytosis and the IESR and uh, dyslipidemia, those sort of things. So, uh, so this is another condition that warrants investigation in the patient with acne. Investigations in patient with muscular cell system suggestive of uh, SAPCO, that is synovitis, acne, pastyrosis, hyperosteosis, and osteitis. These are some sort of a syndromes that can present. That there are some other syndromes also there, PEPA syndrome, PASH, and those things are there, but uh, uh, they are a bit of out of uh, our vision, I think. So uh, in that case, we can do some investigations like bone skin biopsy and uh, ESR uh, X-rays and those things can so. Um, uh, of this uh, bone bones, MRI clinical and sternum also sometimes indicated. So arriving at the diagnosis without investigation is possible here according to the history examination findings. So as a practice in family medicine, we have our scope is beyond the skin. We have to go and explore the extra problems that can be there in this patient. So the problems what we found here is one is the condition. Apart from that, there is some ongoing stress in her life due to this condition. And there is a family history of ischemic heart disease and the overweight and body habitus, uh, overweight body habitus may place her in additional increased risk of cardiovascular risk in future. Uh, and there is an exacerbation of growing asthma in this patient. That means that it is to be optimized to avoid uh, frequent intake of steroids, which can even worsen the acne. And poor dietary pattern again, as uh, he, she is prefers the fast food and is high uh, glycemic index food is one of the precipitant factor for acne. So these also should be um, taken into account when we draw the management plan. Acne vulgaris is primary for of the uh, lesion and there is there won't be uh, no secondary cause for that and it is uh, usually comes in adolescence and young uh, adults but it is not limited to these ages the inflammatory disease this is inflammatory disease of the pyrosebaceous unit as you all know uh, and the process by which the microcomedons develop and evolve into other lesions remains to be elucidated, uh, but these are the main pathological uh, uh, this uh, mechanisms explained. That is, follicular hyperkeratinization, increased sebum production, uh, QT bacterium acne, uh, formerly called Papillomavirus bacterium acne, is uh, anaerobic diphtheroid, 
they can uh, colonize the skin flora and uh, secondarily it can cause inflammation. This is a simple diagram that we discussed, uh, hyperkeratinization and there's a proliferation and there's a block of the pilosebaceous system that causes accumulation of the materials and secondarily infected that cause some uh, TLR, toll-like receptors uh, uh, reaction and uh, it causes nodules and uh, nodular cyst in the later stage. So this pathogenic process is again important for the grading also. Uh, as we are going to see, means staging. This is mild acne, then this one is moderate and severe. So mild acne is comedones and some inflammatory papules and pustules. Comedone acne it has some hair follicles that are dilated, filled with keratin, and moderate acne has, in addition to comedones, there have to be inflammatory papules and pustules and greater number of patients than the mild acne. Then severe acne will uh, constitute of comedones with severe inflammatory papules in larger number, more than five, and scarring will be there. Again, the classification by the age of presentation also there, where we can see this in the neonates, where this is believed to be due to the transplanted diffusion of maternal androgens and usually it disappears by the age of uh, six weeks. Here, this is an uh, infant LIT that can be their, uh, their age of onset usually six months to 16 months. This is because of uh, some sort of a uh, autonomous production of uh, androgens with the uh, premature development of the feedback system. So that uh, some uncontrolled production of this once that feedback system is established, this lesion will go up spontaneously. Here, this is another condition that is called mild mid childhood acne. This is again, um, the onset is around seven years and uh, the time when the androgen level uh, should be there in the lower uh, level. But when it is there in this age, it is again a red flag and it must be, it warrants some investigation to see the increase androgen, androgen production. So uh, this, uh, this age group, if this acne is present, it is mm, worrying. Uh, so this needs some endocrinologist uh, referral also. This is pre-adolescent form, which is again common in seven to 12 years. And after the adolescent form, that is acne vulgaris, this is Later on, set one, which is uh, nodulocystic lesions, stubborn, and usually the distribution is along the lower margin of the jaw. And it is also resistant, um, stubborn one for the treatment. Management plan we have to take some pre treatment assessment to stage the lesion and to see the types of the lesion, severity, and the presence of complications and potential contributing factors. These all are, uh, these all factors be considered when we throw the management plan. And uh, modalities are there, non-pharmacological with patient education, medications, procedural inter interventions. Here, uh, we have the management uh, plan. Um, that is the patient education, first one. Uh, need to use um, adhere proper skincare products practices to wash the face two times with warm water. And we can ask to avoid scrubbing and picking the pimples. Use and 
non comedogenic moisturizers and to use appropriate sunscreen also we can advise on uh, if the patient is supposed to be started with isotretinoin uh, to uh, avoid the blood blood transfusion uh, at least after one month of usage and dietary associations are not very much established but anyhow it is uh, advisable to uh, tell the patient to avoid uh, food with high glycemic index again can cause some insulin resistance and igf is one of the factor that can lead to this sort of lesions uh, we can uh, it will take about uh, we are tell about the response treatment response also otherwise patients will uh, get disappointed and uh, there is more chance for self defaulting the treatment so we have to explain that it will take at least 2 to 3 months to see the response and the uh, Pregnancy also should be contraindicated if we use retinoin so isopretinoin. It's because both the teratogenic. Again, the, the so once we saw the uh, non-pharmacological part of the management, we are moving to this uh, pharmacological management. Can be grouped, as I said again earlier, the pathogenical process is very much important. Again, this. Um, uh, management of acne because these drugs has been grouped uh, according to their action on the pathogenical process. So these tropical retinoids, isotretinoin, azelic acid, salicylic acids are going to uh, prevent the follicular hyperproliferation and uh, abnormal disc damage. Increased sebum production can be limited by isotretinoin, oral contraceptives, phenolactone, and clacosterone, uh, uh, clacosterone, clas and uh, QT bacterium um, proliferation can be limited by benzoyl peroxide, topical antibiotic, and acetic acid. Inflammations can be controlled by this group of drugs. So the pharmacological management, these are the treatment options available. So to recap the pathogenesis process where the drugs are active. Again, I just um, give a small description in the chart form to for you all to go through the agents, dose, preparations and important side effects. So uh, here if you go to go keep on going one by one, it will take a lot of time. So just I will display these slides for a glance. And uh, when we share the uh, presentation, you can go through specially. So these are the uh, first group of drugs, uh, retinoids and antimicrobials and combination products, azelic acid, salicylic acid and Clascosterone and oral antibiotics here and with the dosage and important side effects. Hormonal agents are there, combination OCP or spinolactone against uh, antiandrogens and by alpha uh, in vitro also. And oral retinoids is isotretinoin uh, is very much teratogenic. Uh, this is a flow chart that we can follow to is make the decision easy for the management. So just uh, instead of going through the whole picture, I will go at least the point where our patient is. Here to assess the complication which more uh, the, the, to see assess the complications, warning or more aggressive treatment is Acne scarring, disfiguring, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, or significant psychological distress. Yes, our patient has these features because she is uh, at least one of these. She has some sort of a uh, psychological impact. And if it is, um, but it is not up to the level of depression. So we can make it as a negative uh, triad of this thing and we can go for, follow this up. Here, assess the lesion. 
here comedonal lesions only or fascula papula and the comedonal lesions this girl has these lesions so she will follow this arm from here to here and here so the treatment option for her is tropical retinoids and benzyl peroxide so if it is resistant response is unsatisfactory they can follow the chart further so we got the um, position here to place her. this is for the flow chart for the moderate to cvit that you can go through uh, leisurely management wise there are some procedural interventions that we can go for this procedural interventions usually as a adjunct uh, or a conjunction with the drug treatment to enhance the outcome and to uh, deal with the complications uh, we we even have seen some procedures in the clinics these are extraction to remove the blackheads and whiteheads and the chemicals based using some using some keratolytic agents um, uh, with there are various types of peels with the salicylic acid and glycolic acid peels and microderm abrasion is one process as a non-invasive one uh, this to exfoliate the top layer of the skin to help the reduce the appearance of the acne scar and to improve the skin texture laser therapy uh, again to, to uh, improve the appearance of the scar and there is a blue light therapy also that is very much uh, effective and to kill to use the kill the uh, bacteria as well and to reduce the inflammation uh, options interventions are there that is cortisone injections that will promote the healing in traditional steroids can be used for the stubborn lesions such as keloids, hyper, um, hypertrophy stars, and commandonal extraction with the commandonal extractor that we have seen in the clinic, and fractional laser therapy is more target specific areas of, and to prevent the uh, scarring and promote the collagen production and improve the skin texture. And derm abrasion is another procedure, and substitution is to or pass the needle beneath the dermis and to remove the fibrous bands uh, so it will reduce the um, dimples after that means scars after the healing of uh, acne uh, uh, even this one is carried out as outpatient in the dermatology clinics we can observe so our patient has been given the prescription uh, of Topical retinoid, as we saw in that flow chart, she is well suited to this regime, and she was started with retin A cream 0.2, 0 to 5 percent, and benzyl peroxide cream for next 2.5. And we, she was planned to be seen in the clinic after one month. So there, even though we know the plan uh, management and everything. There is a referral point. When there is, we suspect that acne means it is a urgent one to uh, call the hospital ambulance and admit the patients within 24 hours, like because it has so many systemic effects. And refer the people to the skin dermatologist, uh, consultant dermatologist, if there is a diagnostic uncertainty of it is uh, possibility of conglomerate or nodular cystic acne uh, and we can consider if it is even the uh, mild to moderate not responding to two complete courses of treatment even if it is a moderate to severe and if there's acne with scarring if there is any pigmentary changes or these are again uh, indications for referral and few more indications consider if there is any psychological distress or mental health disorder and if there is any suicidal ideation or body dysmorphic disorders anything there anxiety disorder we have to refer when considering the referral uh, 
patient's potential treatment options also considered. So this concludes the management and few more slides if you like just to go through. Uh, a 17 year old girl with this sort of a skin uh, lesion, there is a um, height of uh, 180 and uh, weight is 83. So what is the possibility? Anyone would, uh, would like to volunteer? The diagnosis? Yes, it's due to PCOS because of obesity and uh, the pattern of vision. Only this one. There is a 20 year old athletic trainee currently attached to ongoing construction, presented with some sort of a eruptions in lesions, the posterior aspect of the jaw. So this is called acne mechanica is another variant of acne. Um, here, this is due to the uh, constant pressure with the helmet strap in the chin region that produces this. Uh, again, can induce the uh, comedon, comedons and it can produce uh, present it as acne. So with the history of uh, this precipitating factors, we can uh, say it is uh, acne mechanica. So, so take home message is this acne is very much distressing with psychic psych sufferings to the patient by Maureen Zelpeser and uh, another quote from um, William can, can life say that the impact is very much devastating and leading to even thought of suicide. So uh, this is, uh, even though it is a skin lesion, the impact of the acne is deeper than the dermis. These are the reference points, uh, uh, reference we got this information. Um, so mainly uh, all our textbooks and some journals. Thank you very much.